Welcome to Spruce Grove Alliance Church, your home. a baby who are in the manger hush shh. baby jesus who are there's a danger that we're going to wake him up he's such good news we want to sing with the angels heavenly sound shout with the shepherds tell what we found worship with the wise men bow Men bow right down. Jesus is born and he's such good news. We want to hush. There's a baby in the manger. Hush. Baby Jesus. There's a danger that we're going to wake him up. He's such good news. We want to sing with the angels. Heavenly sound. Shout with the shepherds. Tell what we found. Worship with the wise men. Bow right down. Jesus is born and he's such good news. We want to sing with the angels. Heavenly sound. Shout with the shepherds. Tell what we found. Worship with the wise men. Bow right down. Jesus is born and he's such good news. We want to shout and sing and worship the king. We want to shout and sing and worship the king. We want to shout and sing and worship the king. Jesus is born and he's such good news. We want to shout and sing and worship the king. Shout and 
and sing and worship the King. Shout and sing and worship the King. Jesus is born and he's such good news. We want to shh. The savior of the world And now We can call him friend God sent his son He's the savior of the world And now We can call him friend Jesus Savior Jesus Savior Son, he's the savior of the world, and now we can call him friend. God sent his son, he's the savior of the world, and now we can call him friend. Jesus.
Welcome and thank you for coming to the Spruce Grove Alliance Church Musical. You will meet Miss Carolyn Bells as she leads the children's choir in the first rehearsal. We will also meet Ginger Brathouse, Holly Branch, Kenny Kane, Mary, Ned, Ted, Jed, Red, and more. As the children rehearse, they begin to share their thoughts about Christmas, and the heart of the story is clear. You can't have Christmas without the cross. Settle down and listen up. I am so excited about all the glorious things we have planned for our family night Christmas extravaganza. Now, I see some new faces tonight, so let me introduce myself. I am Miss Carolyn Bells, your director, and I will now give you a brief recapitulation of the inspiration behind this most magnificent celebration. As we all know, there are certain circles of society who feel it is their duty to remove the mere mention of Jesus' name from this season. They even go as far as wanting to replace the word Christmas with happy holidays, or even worse, winter solstice. <laughs> In response, I have felt a compelling urgency this year to have you all come up with some creative expression of your own to demonstrate what Christmas means to you. Is there some part of the story that particularly helps you connect with the season? Or something you can do to remind others that Jesus is truly the only reason the world celebrates Christmas in the first place? Miss Bells, Miss Bells, I have one, I have one. And who might that be? I'm having a hard time with this new prescription. It's Ginger, Ginger Breadhouse, 
Please, please, can I do my now? Oh, Ginger, certainly. Please make it. <laughs> so, what does he have prepared for us today, dear? Well, as everyone knows, I've been on the cheerleader squad every year since fourth grade. So, of course, this year I was elected as head cheerleader, which was like, duh, no brainer. But still a great honor, and with honor comes responsibility. Hi, Miss Bell, so I'm Candy Cane. Ginger knew it was up to her to use her cheerleading skills to everyone in the true spirit of Christmas, so she taught us to cheer. The perfect Christmas cheer. Yeah! Oh, splendid. Go right ahead. I have a few friends who are going to help me, if that's okay. Come on, girls. <clears throat> so this is Holly Branch, Nativity Grace, Noelle Silence, Gabriella Angel, Ivy Bell, Josephine Mary, and you already met Candy Cane. Here we go. Ready? Okay. Everybody, don't be snooty. Come on, do your Christmas duty. Ring your bell, sing the well. Let us hear your Christmas yell. Glory, glory, ah, ah. Glory, glory, ah, ah. Glory, ah, glory, ah. In the highest. <laughs> That was glorious, or should I say, glory, glory, ah, as. <laughs> Do you have another? Um, Miss Bell, there's only one perfect Christmas cheer. Oh, of course, how silly of me. Thank you, girls. Miss Bell, can we go next? Is that Ned? I could recognize the timbre of that charming backwards accent anywhere. Yes, yes, ma'am. Come on, did you say you needed a tambourine? Oh no, child, wherever do you get these silly questions? Uh, well, these are my brothers, Jed, Ted, and Red. Oh, hello. We've been talking and... We've been talking and thinking and thinking and talking, and we figure we most relate with the shepherds. They just seem to be good old country boys like us. And all of a sudden, it was like the heavenly hosts themselves were telling us to write a song about the whole situation. Can we do it right now? My ears are simply overcome with titillating expectations as they anxiously wait to... to... <laughs> to perform their musical masterpiece. Does that mean yes? Yes, of course. Go right ahead. Only thing is, Dad slipped in the mud last week when he was slopped in the hogs and broke his hand, so we'll be one banjo short. I can do it! I can do it! You play the banjo? Of course! I've only been the national grand champ in my age group three years in a row, and I just happened to carry one with me in case of emergencies. Holly? <laughs> okay, hit it, boys. Well, all right then, let's go. Sitting in a field, tending our sheep Trying real hard not to fall asleep When all of the sudden we heard somebody singing Jed said it might be coyotes We saw a bunch of angels having a party One told us where to go so we to Bethlehem and started looking for a baby wrapped in swine and clothing. Found him in a stable right behind an inn. Then we saw his face. We heard his mama say his name. And we knew right then we'd never be the same again.
be glorious. The audience will be in a complete state of euphoric elation. Uh, does that mean they'll like it? Yes, dear, they will love it. Yeah, that was so fun. So, if you need me for any more gigs, just call my agent. Jed, Ned, Red, what's an agent? Don't know, must be what she calls her mama. <laughs> my heart is just exploding with joyful palpitations as I revel in the imagery of how incredibly serendipitous our family night Christmas extravaganza has the potential of becoming. That means it's gonna be great! Yeah! Um, thank you, Ginger. Please have a seat. Now, who's next? What? It's been going so well. Surely we have a few more volunteers. Now, don't be shy. Oh, Mary, I'm so glad you raised your hand. Please come on up, Precious. What creative expression would you like to share with us today? Well, you had said that if we had something that helped us remember what Christmas is really all about, we could share that. Exactly. Um, I have this ornament. It's really old, and we hang it on our tree every year. Oh, it's exquisite. May I hold it? Look, children. It says Christmas this way, and G says this way across the S. How gloriously clever. It belonged to my grandmother. She said that one Christmas when she was little, her Sunday school teacher asked them to make something they felt to the story of Christmas. Her mother had always taught her that to tell the whole story of Christmas, you have to go from Jesus' birth to his death on the cross, then to when he rose again. I totally agree. Her dad had a glass blowing business, so she asked him to make an ornament for her. When he finished it, she got the idea to paint the words in it so that Jesus and Christmas would cross at the S like that. She gave it to my parents when they got married, and every year when she comes over for Christmas, she'll hold it up and say, you can't have Christmas without Jesus, and you can't have Christmas without the cross. Oh, Mary, what a beautiful story. I love that. She, she's... Did when she told me how to become a Christian. That was the day I decided to give my life to Jesus. Oh, dear, sweet, precious Mary. I'm completely reclaimed. My heart is like a geyser erupting with a flood of uncontrollable emotion. That means she loves Storm is being super dramatic. <laughs> Thank you for the unnecessary commentary, Candy. Now, Mary, do you mind if I take it around the room to allow the children to get a closer look? No, ma'am. That'd be awesome. That's actually a really good place to put it. It's really good.
think we should take a brief intermission. Some of your very gracious mothers have prepared a plethora of which are sure to quench even the most ferocious of appetites. It's break time and there's food in the choir room! Yeah! Mary, aren't you hungry, dear? No, ma'am. But thank you. No worries. I do think I'll go see what's on the menu for tonight. Be back shortly. Oh, and thanks again for what you shared today. It was truly beautiful. Thank you, ma'am. I'm glad you liked it. Oh, hey, Holly. I didn't know you're still in here, too. Yeah, I'm not really hungry either. You okay? You seem kind of sad. You and Ginger are so happy and excited. What's up? Well, I don't feel like being all fired up and cheery right now. Christmas has always been my favorite time of the year, but this year, I dread it. Why? Um, my parents got divorced this year, so this will be the first Christmas we won't be all together. It's just hard, sad. I wish I could skip the whole thing. Wow, Holly, I'm so sorry. Thanks for telling me, though. I'll start praying for you every day. I promise. Thanks. A lot of people tell me they're praying for me. They tell me that God loves me. But if he does, why would he let this happen to me and my family? My grandma always says that hard things are going to happen to us, but when we have Jesus, he helps us get through them. And even in the things that hurt us most, he can always work something good out of it for us. Yeah, well, we'll see. Um, Holly, have you ever accepted Jesus? No, I just started coming to church this summer and heard about becoming a Christian during BBS. But then all the stuff started happening with my parents and we stopped coming. My mom really wanted me to be in this Christmas program, so I just tried coming back. Well, if you're okay with it, I can tell you a story the way my grandmother told me. Yeah, sure, that's cool. Tell me the story when he sent his only son, Jesus, to earth 2,000 years ago. Listen to the history from the book of Luke. So Joseph also... So Joseph also went up from the town of Mathers in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house of and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was who was pleased to marry to him and was expecting a child. 
there were the, the, while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her first son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest rooms available. And there were shepherds living out in the field nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth and laying in the manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth. Peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off in front of Mary and Joseph and the baby in the manger. When they had seen them, they spread out the word concerning what has been told to them. And all who heard it were amazed at the shepherds said to them, but Mary treasured up all the things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising, praising for all the things they've heard, just as they've been told. Children, back to your seats. Stop all this roughhousing. Oh, Mary, I am so sorry. Ned, Ted, Red, Jed, back to your seats. Oh, Miss Bells, can I be the one to apologize first? Mary, I am so sorry. Please forgive me, forgive us. We would never want to do anything to hurt you. Oh, Mary, I'm really sorry. I know how much that meant to you. Oh, a precious family heirloom, hand hewn by your great-grandfather, who meticulously forged this delicate ornament out of the fires of his glass-blowing furnace. Miss Bells is really upset, you guys. It's okay. Mm. It's okay, really. My grandma and I taught me this ornament's symbol of Jesus' love and forgiveness. I felt his love the day she used it. Tell me about him. Ned, I forgive you because Jesus forgave me. That's what the cross reminds us to do. Thank you, Mary. I don't know what to say. Well, I do. I guess none of you would remember, but I was only top of my broken hand blown glass repair class at the Home Depot last year. <laughs> and I just happened to have a repair kit in my backpack. I can have this put back together before you can say Christmas cross. Come on, girls. Miss Bills, can we go watch her fix it? Oh, there are no words to describe to all how completely overwhelmed I am by this epic display out, of love out, and forgiveness in the realm of your childlike innocence. The, the memory of this quintessential moment will be seared in the recesses of my soul, and I will forever... <laughs> Miss Bells! Miss Bells, can I talk to Mary really, really quickly? Why, certainly, Candy. Thank you. Mary, thank you for reminding us what Christmas is really about. It's more about the major. It's go to the cross where Jesus paid for all our sin. So who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Just like your grandfather said, grandmother said, you can't have Christmas without Jesus and you can't have Christmas without the cross. Now let's go fix your ornament. Now where was I? Right. Children? Hello? Children? Wait for me. I know you meant to, but oh, and have a merry and glorious Christmas to you all as well. Children!
Well, I have to thank Debbie and my staff for putting this on the first time by themselves. Can we just give them a hand for that? You guys did so good, and I look good in red. Well, you know, when I was watching this, one thing that really stood out to me is something I've been dealing with with people. Um, when bad things happen to us, we wonder, where is God? And many people blame God for their circumstances. And many people have left the church because they have lost their faith because God didn't do what they told him to do. And I just want to bring your attention to some scriptures that have really helped me. I've been going through a difficult time lately, and someone gave me this card, and I just loved it. It says, the last thing you need is one more person telling you to hang in there. Just remember that God is hanging on to you. And the scripture is from uh, Psalms 100, man, that's little, 1816. <laughs> it says, he reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of the deep waters. And uh, this Christmas season, we learned how Jesus came as a baby. Yay! And then he had to run for his life to Egypt. And he ended up on a cross. He died for us. But then the good news is resurrection life. And he's calling all, all of us to give our life to him. To die to ourself. Because we think we know what's best. But God created us. We're in the palm of his hand. And the scripture I wanted to read from John 16.33 says, Many people have, no, sorry, it says, I have told you all this so that in me you will have peace. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows. But take heart, I have overcome the world. I was raised in a church where they said if you trust in Jesus... Nothing bad is going to happen to you. But you know what the Bible tells us? We will have trials and we will have sorrows. But Jesus has overcome the world. We have hope in heaven. We have hope in Jesus. And the last scripture I wanted to just um, talk to you about is from 2 Corinthians 4.16. I hold on to this. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, but inwardly we are getting renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternity, an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. I thank God for eternal life. I thank God for forgiveness. I thank God that I belong to him and I'm in the palm of his hand. And I can trust him in every situation. And just because bad things happen to me doesn't mean that he's left me or he's caused them. We live in a broken and a fallen world, but thank God he has overcome the world. Thanks for listening to this week's message from Spruce Grove Alliance Church. For more information or to hear past messages, please visit sgac.net.